Hey everybody, so today we're going to check out the Labists X1 3D printer. It goes by many other names, including the Easy 3 X1. It is a $100 budget 3D printer. Does it work? Does it work well? Let's find out. Check it out. Here we go. Alright, so here we are. It is out of the box. This is the Labists 3D printer, um, also known as the uh, Treed X1, Easy Treed X1 printer. Uh, this is basically how it comes. It comes with a power supply, USB cable, some really tiny amount of filament, um, a filament spool holder that snaps on, some screws, an SD card reader, this um, screw actually fell out of the top carriage up here. Not a big deal, I have plenty of M3 nuts. Um, but this is pretty much all of it assembled um, out of the box. All you have to do is put the um, Z and X gantry into the Y gantry and you're pretty much set to go. Now, it came with not enough sample filament to do much. So I do have this little sample spool roll um, that I got from a MakerBox subscription that I'm going to try and use. The thing with this is it says it's not able to hold a whole kilogram spool, and I can believe it. There are some mods on Thingiverse that I'm going to try uh, to actually get it to hold a kilogram. So we'll go ahead and put this together and take a look. Okay, so it's on, uh, you have the cable, you have the insertion of the filament, you have the box, and according to this, um, the green light is on, which is good. Um, you push the plus button to heat it up, and it'll start pulling in filament. And this is the home button, we're going to home it and try to level what little of the bed there is. So traveling down which is a good sign it's always good looks like at home that just fine um, I, I guess it only homes the, the Z um, we'll try and find out what happens to the bed Okay, now time for the loading sequence. Um, this doesn't have a filament guide on it, so what you're supposed to do is go ahead and stick it in as far as it will go till it stops, and then you are supposed to hit the plus button once, and it starts rapidly flashing. Once it heats up, it'll start drawing filament in and spitting it out the bottom nozzle. We'll see how that goes. All right, it is now slow blinking, so that means it's up to temp. And you can't see it, but I can actually feel the filament getting pulled in. And it looks like we have some coming out the bottom here. 
So in order to stop it, you're supposed to be able to just hit it one time, and that stops the loading sequence. So then I'll get rid of this smush down here, um, and then we will just hit the play button and see what happens. Now it uh, it comes with pre-sliced G-code. I have no idea what's on it, and apparently. Um, it just plays the most recent file on the SD card. So we'll take a look, see what happens. Alright, it's complete. Uh, the nice thing is you can just lift this little magnetic sheet off. So once you get the little magnetic sheet off, you can just kind of flex it, peel it away. It comes off pretty well. No major issues. Put the sheet back on. It's kind of nice. It's got these little alignment tab screws here. And then this, it always prints on a raft. We'll just go ahead and try and peel it off. Seems like it's coming off not too bad, actually. Yeah, it's pretty clean for, for a raft. I mean, I'll take it. Um, it does this to compensate for any um, adhesion problems or layer problems. Um, if you notice here, it starts to under-extrude horribly. And I think the reason being is that the default settings is 180 degrees celsius and this pla i mean i haven't had pla melt that low in a while i usually go about 205 210 so i'm going to re-slice this and i'm going to try it in prusa slicer and see if it makes any difference all right and so here is the second test and this was sliced with prusa slicer um, as you can see by the skirt hanging around it so we'll go ahead and do a flex off of the part with the raft. Uh, it's stuck on there pretty good. There we go. We'll clean off the rest of that later. Um, but here's the part. Now, oh, come on. All right, so here's the part. Um, Again, some extrusion issues. I'm not 100% sure what's going on here. It might be due to the fact that it doesn't have a part cooling fan on it. But we will be solving that by adding one. Um, overall though, it's a pretty good looking print. So let's get some dimensions and see how dimensionally accurate it is. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and measure the cube. And we're going to measure on the Y. So we're going to measure the Y accuracy of the cube. Go ahead and stick that in there. 20.08. So that's pretty accurate. Uh, we'll go ahead and change it to the X direction. 19.96. Which is also pretty close. And then we'll go Z. Um, that raft did not really want to come off. So it's 20.49, and I think a lot of that has to do with the raft uh, because it didn't want to come off. Uh, we'll have to see about printing without a raft. But overall, I mean, we went from the standard slicer to Prusa slicer. Not a huge amount of difference. Um, and again, I think this just suffers from bad part cooling. 
So we'll give it a try. Um, I'll try and see if I can aim a fan at it while it prints and see what happens. And here we have the part sliced in Prusa Slicer. Um, I set a fan behind it to get it some extra cooling. Seems like it looks a little bit better. Let's take a closer look here. I also printed it without a raft. Um, it definitely looks a lot better. A lot better. So part cooling does play a huge factor in this. Uh, obviously there's some ringing there, but I mean, again, this is a hundred dollar budget printer. And like I said, the bottom looks a little rough. Um, I didn't get the bed perfectly level and I'm not adding any adhesive to it. Just wanted to kind of give it a test, but overall, I mean, for a hundred dollar 3D printer, I'll, uh, I'll take that. I have, a several hundred dollar Tronxy that performs far worse. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with it and happy with it. What do you guys think? Alright, so I've since moved the printer and printed some upgrades. So I printed this one kilogram spool holder that just kind of snaps onto the rails here and it fits. It holds a one kilogram spool. Um, so I printed that on my Ender 3. I also printed this little filament guide. Um, I used the printer to print it and it had a lot of cooling issues as you can see here. But it definitely keeps the filament going into the nozzle. You'll notice this is a little adapter. This is um, goes to the board. It's for the fan. It's not used. You can use it if you wanted to, I guess, but those wires are super thin. So I just bought my own 5015 radial fan. And I found this little part on Thingiverse that I have attached it with double-sided tape. And it goes under here and it blows out right next to the nozzle to help cool. And I think you will agree that this Benchy looks pretty good. I mean, there's obviously some retraction, stringing issues going on here, but for a hundred dollar machine, um, yeah, I'll take it. It's uh, actually pretty awesome. So, yeah, like you said, there's some stringing going on, but that might be just a temperature or a retraction thing. Um, they actually have it set as four millimeters retraction in the software that comes with it, but it doesn't seem to like it um, that far. So this is printed at 205 C. I'm not sure how good the temperature control is on this thing, but like I said, not bad for a hundred dollar printer. Nothing that can't be fixed with a blast from a heat gun right there. Pretty awesome. All right, everybody. So that was the Labists or Easy 3D X1 3D printer. Now that is a pretty capable little printer for under a hundred dollars. What are your thoughts on it? Go ahead and leave them in the comments below. And as always, like, subscribe, and I'll catch you later.